Everybody. Everybody. Rock your body. Wake your body. Nods and Jay. This morning. Woo! Yeah. yeah. We're back. We are back. And I'm glad to be back. Better than ever. Yeah. We're both a little bit, well, I'm... We're both exhausted. Tired. We're, life been lifing. <laughs> life been lifing. I'm life a little been lifing. And I'm a little bit under the weather because I think I've been pushing myself a little bit too much. But, you know, so if my energy drags, I apologize. But we are here to serve our community. We are here. We are here. And we're ready to rock and roll. So. Yes. I'm trying to pull this up to me. Come on. You've been looking down the whole time. <laughs> I think you're fantastic. I know, but I'm just trying yeah. to get us situated. Okay. Welcome to your morning cup of local news. What's happening in real world mess? Thank you. <laughs> I'm Naja Nicole. And I'm Jay Street Jr. And he looks like a lion today, like a legit, that's a lion's mane today. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. said, put it back. He said, no. Yeah. I said, put it up. He said, no. She found and herself. And then he roared at me. She found herself in an uproar, so about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what? What's the, uh, from the Wizard of Oz? The cur Courageous Lion? Is yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I don't know. He was looking was... for heart or cur courage? I don't know. I don't know. So, flowers. <laughs> <laughs> flowers this morning. Happy birthday to Ray of Sunshine. She's turning seven today. You've yeah. been a dad for seven years. I have. And I will say what I will always say. Um, it has made me a better person. What? In all of the right ways. If Look you at that. If you'd have known me, you know, eight years ago, and like you wouldn't call me a terrible person, but you know, you would call him a terrible person. But my flaws were clear, and <laughs> I still have flaws, but those flaws have been reduced, and I've improved in some ways. Parenting is the hardest job I've ever had, bar none. But um, you know, it I wouldn't a change job. a thing. It's a, it's a, it's a very hard job. It's, it's a, a constant beast. job. It never goes away, and I don't want it to. Um, <laughs> but yeah, my baby is seven today, and I will never forget. Um, the first time I laid eyes on her, and the first time I felt a genuine, protective, gorilla instinct at a level that I didn't think I had a capacity for. Because, um, yeah, when, when, when I saw her underneath of those heat lamps, and she looked cold, and, oh. and them nurses, like, I wasn't going to hit anybody's nurse, you know what I'm saying? But I was like, move! <laughs> <laughs> My baby's cold! Y'all going to do something now, or I'm going to do something right now. So, yeah, but... Love you, Ray Ray, Ray Marie Street. Um, you know, by far one of the best things that has ever happened to me. So, yeah. She's a sweetie pie. Um, I don't know if I say that, but... <laughs> she is a sweetie pie. She is, in her own special way. <laughs> Whatever you want to so, call it. <laughs> seven is my favorite number. Oh, okay, cool, and, cool. And um, I remember when I was in seventh grade, mm -hmm. my seventh grade teacher, Mr. Mitchell, said that seventh, the, the number seven is the year of finding your own independence. No, oh, seven got in the house. <laughs> uh -huh. So, Ray, I wish you the most independent and beautiful, wonderful seventh birthday, my dear. You are truly a sweetheart and super intelligent. Oh, my gosh. She's so stinking smart. I love that. And you're beautiful. So, I hope you get all the candy and all the cake that you want today. She will get all the things today. Today is oh, the day. Oh, and Lisa, happy seven years, boo. You been momming, girl. Yo, you but, you know how to mom. I mean, I was gonna save that for listen. Mother's Day, but you listen, my wife. She a mom, mom. My, my <laughs> wife pushed that baby out, and I'm not saying any. Here we go. I always feel the need to do this. <laughs> I'm not suggesting that anyone is lesser. Please don't be offended. We're not but, doing this. Just but move I'm, on. I'm gonna shout out my wife for pushing that baby out without any yes. medication. You know, seven what I'm saying? years of being selfless, because mm. that's what motherhood is, selfless. So, oh, yeah. congratulations and happy momiversary to you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we also have flowers for, oh, Poof the Rabbit. Go on my page. He is currently ninth in the, in the running for America's Favorite Pet. I need y'all to go on my Facebook, go to the link, and vote, 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 okay? He needs to win. He's a magical rabbit. I promise you. I'm going to do a video. We need to do a live with him so people can meet him. YouTube. Okay, we're going to do a YouTube live with Poof. Yep. Um, so yeah, go vote for him. Go on my page. It's pinned at the very top. Again, I am not a pet person, but 
poop, poop has won stole some hearts. my entire heart. <laughs> so yeah. Yep. Um, Winners Inc. Uh, Marion Watson. Marion. So this past weekend, I hosted the Winners Inc. Speak Out. And it was an event catered to the community over uh, off of Route 9 in it was uh, Rose Hill Garden Park. And if anyone knows Marion, um, or if you don't know her, this is a woman who is dedicated to making sure that the community has the resources that they need. Um, there were so many families there. There were so many representatives there. People, Maria Cabrera was there to talk about what she planned on doing for the community. Um, there was several people there that were speaking to the kids. I hosted a talent show where they were doing dance battles. I don't know what kind of dances those was. Still to this day, I don't know what they're called. <laughs> but <laughs> we had. In a case great you time. missed our Dancing with the Stars routine, neither of us are no, our accomplished doing. dancers. Right, so. right, right, right. So <laughs> I just want to shout out to Marion Watson and the Winners Inc. team for putting mm -hmm. together a phenomenal event, and I'm looking forward to working with you guys in the future. Um, something I wanted to bring up it, that I noticed is a lot of people talk to kids about, like, a lot of these representatives, a lot of folk our age and older. Keep going. They can't see that. Dang, the lighting's too strong. It's terrible. Go ahead. So, I just want to simply say, when you're speaking to children, when you're speaking to kids in the community, remember, they have their own language. So, if you can't match their language, if you can't match their energy, you're, they're not hearing you. So I just want people to be mindful of that when you're talking to kids. Like, I remember what, being at the event, resources, 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 that word kept coming up. But as a kid, I was like, resources? We'll be giving out oil? We got coal? <laughs> you know, like, uh, corn and stuff? Grain? No, resources. I explained to them what that meant. And, and I need people to understand that when y'all are talking to kids, is that you break things down so that they understand it. Because not all kids will get it. So, I just wanted to put that out there. Great point. Yeah. yeah. Also, Rob Pfeiffer. I love you, man. You, He came in the clutch. He did the photography for the event. He and always shows up in the he clutch. He really does. And he's he done that me, with the art museum, too. Yes. He's done that for his, so, yes. yeah. He came to the event. He sent me the photos. They're awesome. He's just a great guy. Love you so much. Um, K-Hawk. K-Hawk hit me no, up. No, no. Let me handle this. Oh, ooh. No, no, no. I mean this. No, no. It's fine. No, no, no. I mean this. So... Um, shout out to k -Hawk. I've always respected him as an artist and I've never had a problem with him, but I gained a new level of respect for him as a man and as a fellow, you know, person who's working in technology. Listen, he reached out to Naj because he saw some things that could be improved, uh, with one of the interviews that we did and just in general. And, um, he gave some great concrete suggestions that were you know, accurate in terms of some things that we need to improve. Mind you, I do know what we need to improve, so I'm not, you know, I want y'all to know that. But, in a place, in a state, in a city, where I constantly hear about haters hating, Ooh. and quite frankly, haters hate. quite frankly, because I'm in a mood today, Ooh. as someone who has been directly hated on uh, by another black man, I have a deep appreciation for k Hawk reaching out to help because he very well could be like, yo, look at these fools. They sound as whack. This is whack. This, that, and the other is whack. <laughs> oh, well, I hope they fix it. This is why they don't go nowhere. You know what I'm saying? That could very easily be his attitude, but it was the opposite, and it's exactly what the city needs. He said, yo, you should try to purchase this piece of equipment, this piece mm -hmm. of equipment, and this will make that better because he's trying to help us win. You understand? Like, we don't have any enemies. We don't create enemies. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, thank you, K-Hawk, for your suggestions. I put them to my mind, and I listen to them. I appreciate them, and I encourage everyone to behave as he did um, for the greater good. And, and thank you. Flowers. Period. Mm -hmm. um, also, Darren Alexander, who is a National Guard member and also a CNA, um, he was on 6abc.com. They are highlighting him because he has now um, started caring for seniors. And I just wanted to shout him out because a lot of people, how do I say this? A lot of people don't have the patience to work with our older generation for whatever reason. And... 
Um, I ain't one of them people. I love me some older folk, okay? I will sit there and watch Golden Girls for days with you, and we can eat tomato soup with oyster crackers. Well, just because probably you're right around the corner from being there. So, you know what I'm saying? You're almost a Golden Girl. So, Don't, it makes offend. Sense. Don't offend our Golden Girls. I love Golden generation. Girls. I, 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 you're, you're almost Golden. You should be living your life like it's Golden. You know what I'm saying? So good. I don't, like, hopefully you're not offended because you love them, right? R right? There's nothing negative about what I'm saying. I just feel like so, your tone. Your tone. It's the tone for me. You know what? It's I the can, tone for as, me. Uh, as the dad of a seven-year-old daughter, you're right. <laughs> I have the capacity to change my tone. Hey, Naj, I just want you to know. Now you're, now, now you've offended me. <laughs> I, I think that probably the reason that you're able to so Who are you, Michael? So able to wonderfully connect to the golden wow. generation is because you too are almost golden. Well, you know, and what? you should thrive in that. Goal. I am. I thrive. Yes. All right. I am that person that will sit on the phone with one of my great aunts for two hours. Okay, talking about everything under the sun. So I just wanted to applaud this young man. He's 28 years old, and you know, let you know, sir, you are doing a great job because we have to take care of our elders. Period. So. So Clarity. make sure, sir, make sure that you check on Naj. Make sure she's okay. What's not happening in Delaware? <laughs> this was becoming my favorite segment. What's not What's happening? What's not happening? Because hey. nothing, nothing happens in Delaware, mm, right? No. All right. No. So today at 6 p.m., at the House of Laughs, there is a fundraiser for First District State Representative Shanae Darby. I don't know if y'all have seen them, but Shanae, has, Ms. Darby has signs on almost every lawn in, on, what is it, my, where I live, Northside? Mm -hmm. Like literally. In her district, yeah. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. Hey, I'm not listening. So wait, if you. you're not out of district, if you're out of district, you can't vote for her? Oh. Well, she taking over the first district, baby. Like, mm -hmm. they love her. So, yeah. Go to the fundraiser tonight at House of Laughs to help her fundraise. <laughs> I don't know what that consists of. I've never been to a fundraiser. Fundraising is fundraising. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Shanae is awesome. She was one of our first guests, I think, when we, when we did, um, when we were at Theater N. And she gave us her whole life story, baby. So we know everything we need to know about her. She's a great person, loves community. So if you have time today, please head on, head on over to House of Labs at 6 p.m. A young, outspoken, strong, intelligent black woman mm -hmm. is a wonderful, uh, 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 is, is, is a wonderful thing. Who has empathy. Yeah. Um, wind Down Wednesdays with Gerald Chavis, also at House of Laughs, directly after the fundraiser. So you can go ahead, fundraise, talk about the community and the changes you want to see and support somebody who's trying to make those changes happen. And then, right after, you ain't even got to move your seat. You can sit there and get you a good old show with some drinks and food. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. Mm -hmm. um, Friday at 7 p.m., you got the open mic night at 205 North Market Street. Best Kept Soul and DJ Smooth at the Reef, Friday at 8.30 p.m. I'm going to let you know now you need to call and make your reservations. Do not show up to the door thinking you're going to get in, okay? Mm -hmm. Have your crab legs in a show. It's not going to happen. You need to call and set your reservation. And Best Kept Soul has been on fire lately. They should be. On fire. I love them. Yeah. I love them. Um, then you have on Saturday, Little Nature Explorers. At 9.15 at the Brandy Wine Zoo for 45 minutes. Um, go to their website to see the series. I think it's like three or four weeks. And if you're a member, you get like a certain price. And if not, um, you pay a different price, of course. But you can also pay per session. So if you like this session, but you can't do the next week, you can pay, pay per session. But this is great for our kids. You know, they come out of school. And you, a lot of people do dance they do sports and stuff but this is great for the kids who you know love animals and insects and creatures and stuff so if you have time head on over there um, register on their website and take your kids to go explore um, you said you have a guest panelist position oh no I actually forgot that I put that in the notes um, no so on on what Monday when I was driving back from Boston uh, oh, wait. I was... Okay, wait a minute. No. Yes. That's, that, that, that's not part of this segment. 
That's what I thought. Okay. That you brought it I up, thought so it was continue. done. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. So that's what's not happening in Delaware. There's nothing to do here at all. You can't go nowhere and do nothing and see nobody. Just stay in your house miserable. Um, and this is all the list. This is the list of things that you can't do. Yeah. So just make sure you hate on as many people as possible. And, and talk about Delaware like it's boring. Because <laughs> this is only what I found. And, you know, that's not happening. All right. All right. <laughs> Tell us about your weekend, Jay. Yeah. So, um, I, I'm out of my mind. I know it. But I, I drove we, we, we know that. to Chicago on... This man drove. Drove. I don't like flying. I'm not afraid of flying. I'm not afraid of flying. I just... I don't like the experience. So basically, if you're within 12 hours of me, I'm most likely going to drive. And before I even get to that, the funniest part of what I'm saying is literally, so when I said, because everybody else flew out to Chicago, it was a group of us from Morehouse, my, some of my brothers, we all went to Chicago to do a Tough Mudder. And everybody's like, yo, you crazy for driving. What are you, what, what are you, why don't you just get a plane ticket, this, that, and the other. On the way back, I drove back it took me, you know, some time. I got back by like, uh, I don't know, about 8 o'clock at night, pretty oh much. Now, here's the funny part about that. One of my brothers, who lives in Maryland, very close to here, got back after me. Oh. Because his plane was delayed by like seven hours. <gasps> so that's why I drove. He had <laughs> I'll leave it at that. So anyway, um, I went with my brothers to do a Tough Mudder. Uh, we ran basically six and a half miles and went through all these obstacles just outside of Chicago. He did like a Ninja Warrior. It was like a, it was like a giant Ninja Warrior thing that's outside. It was really oh. fun. What? I have so many jokes in my mind right now. That's fine. Um, <laughs> throw them at me. And it was a really good time. And um, the main thing that I want to talk about is the reason that we went is my brother Mark Nelson, who was a great musician, he runs two churches down in Atlanta, um, he lost 140 pounds. He lost a me. He lost me. <laughs> he lost a me. How much do you weigh? I'm about, I'm just over 150. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not big. I'm small. Most of, most of that's in your head, too. Exactly. Um, so, he lost 140 pounds the hard way. And he lost it Ooh, that's in the middle of the pandemic. He just started eating the right foods. He gave up things like soda and lost a lot of weight, a tremendous amount of weight for the sake of his own health and for the sake of being there with his family long term. And he said, you know what, I want to celebrate this weight loss by, you know, uh, challenging myself with, with, with something uh, physical. And, you know, I'm 45. I think he might be 45 too. We're the same age. But like, you know, number one, the fact that he lost that weight at any age and also at 45 right. makes it harder. And then decided to take on this physical challenge. Um, I couldn't be more... <laughs> And I couldn't have more admiration for that. And it was also a great bonding experience. You know, just something for guys to get up and kind of safely do, relatively <laughs> safely, uh, without getting in any trouble. Yeah, and guys playing in the mud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we had a really good time, you know. So if, you know, number one, if you're over 40, you're not old. You know, you're not old. That's if, right. If, 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 you, you, if you just use your body and get in the process of using it regularly, you know, you might not be able to perform at the level of a professional athlete. Of course not. You know, and you might not be your peak self when you were 24, but you don't lose that much if you maintain. You can, you can learn. You can run a marathon. You can run six, seven miles. You can do all the things as long as you don't have any real injuries. And if you do, then you work around them. But, you know, I had a great time. I would do it again most likely. Um, and shout out, I guess, Flowersville, I should have said, for Mark uh, for, for putting in the hard work and uh, bringing us together um, in a way that was meaningful. I so, think that was yeah. my favorite part, is like when you first told me about it and you were like, yeah, we're coming together because he did this. Like, that, That's probably one of the best ways that you can support somebody who is trying to make a life change. <clears throat> when they reach out to you and you are there for them, you know, and you huddle around that person and let them know like, hey, I'm here, mm. that's a big deal. So. Mm. Yeah. It was also cool because, and this is, you know, I guess me plugging HBCUs, but like, you know, there's a certain bond um, yeah. for, that we have from Morehouse specifically and from the HBCU bond too that's unbreakable. And it's un, there's, no, there's no other experience like an HBCU in the world, quite frankly. Um, and we were noting that, like, I haven't seen Mark 
it may be 20 years since I've seen him. You know what I'm saying? Oh, snap. But the coolest thing was that because of the common experience that we shared years and years ago, eons ago, <laughs> and because of the character, his, his, his character, when we sat back down and ate dinner that first night we got there and had, and I had a couple of drinks, nobody else drinks with me, um, <laughs> you know, it's like we didn't skip a beat. Mm. It's like I knew exactly who I was dealing with and it was completely familiar and it was it was it was it was it was great in all the wonder in, in all the right ways. So, so. how did y'all keep in contact? Like, I mean, social media has its benefits, man. When did you graduate? Uh, <laughs> oh God, I'm scared. Naja Nicole. When, uh, when did you graduate? I graduated college in 1999. <laughs> oh my God! There was no social media, Jay. How'd y'all find each other? Did he send a carrier pigeon? <laughs> wow! He sent them pigeons, right? I uh, was eight. We weren't even. I didn't even live in Delaware then. I don't think. Did I? I don't. Yeah. I, I might know. actually. I think we just moved to Delaware because I think we left PA in '98. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Well, kudos to y'all. Mm -hmm. Kudos awesome. to Mark, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um. Back to school. All yeah. the kitties is going to all the grades. So a few things that I want to talk about. Um, number one, we have to remember that we are coming out. We're dealing with a, a recent pandemic. And I know everybody is stressed. I know everybody has been stressed and worried and, and all those things. Let's remember to have patience and understanding and empathy for our educators and all those who work in a school setting. Okay, I know things are a little wobbly. Some kids are just getting back to a building. Some kids are still virtual. Some kids are hybrid. Some kids are changing schools completely. Let's just be mindful that everybody has gone through this. It's not just you and your family. It's also the people who work at the buildings, at the schools, and their families. So let's all be patient and understanding when dealing with different changes and things that are going on with the school. Also, when you're doing your back to school photos online, do not put where your child is going to school. Apparently there is um, a heightened issue with uh, trafficking and kidnappings in Delaware right now. This is like one of the best ways to have a target on your kids back you can post a picture of them in their uniform you could post a picture saying happy first day fourth rising fourth grader rising fifth grader all these wonderful things but let's be mindful of not giving out every bit of information the people who know and need to know will know because they know you um but other, you know outside of that you know you can celebrate your child going back to school let's just be smart about it because the interwebs is crazy um and then also make sure that you're checking your kid's backpack before and after school, okay? Bullying is a real thing, and kids, you know, they have their own imaginations, and, you know, things happen. So let's just be mindful of watching our children, because it's not always them. Sometimes it's the influence of others that causes a change um, in your child. So just in these next few weeks and maybe even the next few months let's just keep a watchful eye on our children and the 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 building the, the teachers and all of that be mindful be patient be understanding be empathetic we're all in this together <clears throat> so there we go yeah all right another thing i wanted to talk to you about this um uh, because you played sports in school okay so i in scouring the interwebs about um, local news there's during school time there's always an update about the high school sports okay right and I remember when I was in school how important being in a good like high school team was no sure. matter what sport it was sure and even coming out of high school going into college and being an adult seeing that the emphasis that schools and parents put on high school sports before we even get to college so, you know, coming out of the back to school conversation we just had, I want us to also be mindful that when we're cheering our, our, our athletes on to be the best that they can in their sport, that we also remind them that 
dreams and realities are two very different things. And yes, you can dream to be a LeBron James. You can dream to be, a, you know, Tiger Woods and all that. But also remember that if that doesn't happen, you're still a great person. You're still a capable student. You get where I'm going? Yeah, absolutely. This? Okay. Well, we, I'm trying to find where this is coming so from. So I realized that a lot of people in my age group, they got lost when they didn't become the superstar that they thought they were going to be. And I think when you have that conversation with your kid early on while they're in high school, it makes it easier for them to transition. Because a lot of people, I really, like, it's sad. Nobody ever talks about this. But it's like they didn't become who they thought and said that they were going to be. And so they lost their mind. Yeah, that's a shame. Uh, I mean, the only thing I'll say about that, quite frankly, is like, listen, I, I played sports all of my high school career and I thoroughly enjoyed it. But I also, and maybe this is kind of a, I'm sure to a degree, is a credit to my parents, but like, I knew damn well I wasn't going to be a professional athlete. Like, I was good and I was strong, but I, like, okay, so, I mean, ho hopefully, you know, parents, you know, push your child to be the best that they can be and to put in the work, but, you know, and, and if, because I think, well, if they want to be a professional athlete, certainly encourage that, but make sure that they're in reality in terms of what their abilities and performance uh, ability and performance, actual performances are. Because if you aren't, uh, you know, if you aren't making first team all state, if you aren't making some serious statistics in whatever your, your, your sport is, if you're not putting in serious, serious work every day, then it is highly, un it's highly unlikely that you'll become a professional athlete either way. So the first part is like 1% of people, I don't know what the exact numbers are, Chris Fullman does know, but like, <laughs> but like, it's a very small percentage of people who actually become professional athletes. So everyone needs to be walking into their high school sport knowing that fact. And then if you're not already as a sophomore junior performing at the highest level within the state, sorry. So it's great. Like I was really good on Tower Hills, you know, football team, but I wasn't breaking any records. So that automatically told me, listen, you're a great, you know, part of our high school team with these private school kids, but you are not about to be Barry Sanders, even though you're out running some of these local, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, perspective. Plus I know that I'm not big, I'm fast, but like I, in high school, I weighed 130, 135 pounds max. So, yeah, reality check, you know? <laughs> I just want to say that because we go in every year and it's always... And we don't need more athletes. We need more, we need more scientists. We need more engineers. We need more engineers. We need, yeah. That's like, what we need. We need people re rebuilding these in their mind. Like, yes. Yeah, political science majors. That's what we need. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, this is something I've wanted to talk about for a while and I just never got the chance to. But I just feel like when y'all... So many people will sign their child up for Little League. And we'll be harping on, okay, you're going to get a scholarship, and then you're going to go to the, the NFL, you're going to do this. Like, and I that's a big problem with the American education yes. system. It shouldn't yes. be that you're trying to get them to... Don't you, prepare them for school. You sports. can't afford prepare school for life. because you can't afford... Because most people can't afford uh, college education because it's so absurdly priced that your you know, option becomes, well, either going to the Army or, or you know get us a, a scholarship as a basketball player. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a, a, a mark against our country as a whole, but I love sports. Like I, I think that every child, that. you should, and you should strive to be a great athlete. You I'm should not strive saying, to be great at whatever you do. Exactly. So parents just remember as much as you're cheering for them in the stands, cheer for them, you know, when they're doing their homework, cheer for them when they're struggling on their tests and stuff. Like, make sure that their academics are as high as their... Make sure that they can level. write as well as they can throw the ball. Yes. Hmm, yeah. Yes. Okay. I think I'm going to skip the uh, Kathy McGinnis thing. Cool. All right. Jay-Z's verse on God Did. So, I heard about it. So, I, I saw the tweets. Yes. Okay, I saw the tweets where Twitter was a twittin'. And, and going in on his different stuff. And I saw the posts on the social medias. Like, yes. oh boy. I was like, oh boy, I got to check yes. this thing out. And like, I oh like, man. I hit up Jay. I was like, did you listen? Did Yo, you listen? Because there have been a couple, like, you know, sometimes, like, okay, you know, I remember that, 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 that Black Thought verse on, uh, I forget what it was on, but he had, like, this long verse maybe a few years ago. And I was like, yo, I got to check it. And I was like, oh. So I'm waiting for that. Go ahead. 
So I was excited. I was like, all right, so we're going to listen to this and I'm going to break this down. Because, you know, I've been doing a little studying. You know, I went back and listened to Lil' Kim's first album, which I still haven't recovered from. <laughs> and you won't. <laughs> I won't. Um, you know, I've been, I've been really into studying the, the beginning of certain artists. And, um, you know, just the work that they have. And I'm going to be completely honest with you. And I hope y'all... Hold on. Time out. This is going to be a moment, probably, <laughs> where you viewers, you know, because we understand that the, that the J-Hive is the same as the B-Hive. I just made that term up. There's no J-Hive, obviously. But, like, oh, that, like, you know, some of y'all are going to be upset with the opinions voiced today from our show. And that's okay. But go ahead. So... I, y'all know I am not a rap fan, okay? And if I do listen to oh, wait, rap... Wait, 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 that's not true. You say that, you've said that to me before no, no, and I realized like, that you... you will not catch me quoting a verse from some random But you love rap. J. Cole. There's a difference between being a rap fan in its entirety and being a... Like you're artist. not a hip-hop head. Exactly. But... But I do love... Okay, like, okay, okay, right, okay. I do I can love certain it. artists. Yes. Work. I think the last time I listened to Jay-Z like that was when my dad would play him over and over again, The Blueprint. Shout out to your dad because that that album and American Gangster were my two favorites specifically from Jay-Z. I love, mm -hmm. I the only album that I may have banged more than The Blueprint is Bang. AT Aliens. Banged more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. So I remember that and, you know, as a kid, I wanted to be like my dad. So, you know, I was, you know in my room, yeah. you know, but I, I couldn't listen to more than maybe 15 seconds. Why? Because, number one, <laughs> maybe something wrong with me. No, it's not. I, my, for me, when I, li I'm a very literal person, so when you are, like, when you are speaking to me, I listen for every word and I pick out the definitions of each word that you're using to understand where, what you're saying. So when I'm listening to rap, the people who use tons and tons and tons of metaphors and stuff, <laughs> I am like You this. start drowning. <laughs> like I can't, there's too many pieces to put yes, together. Yeah, I'm puzzle. like, oh wait, wait. Just say what you gotta say, yeah, bro. Yeah, like, <laughs> because I, you just gave me three <laughs> layers of metaphor within four bars of music, and yes. I need to push time out. I, need I respect pause. that. And he and I respect that completely because and back in the day it was just a hip hop, the hip to the hip the hip hop, the jump. I understand that that's just like kind of scatting, and what you hear is not a test. We're just having fun. I understood everything you said. You Wait, know, was, was, he was saying some things, and I was like, <laughs> I love I it because I was like, okay, I okay, I got the billionaires, and then. Like, when, when you use, like, nicknames and stuff, then I'm like, well, whose nickname is that? And then I'm thinking, wait, so that person's a billionaire? And, wait, and so, like, I'm just like... That's why you gotta... That's the joy of hip-hop, son. You gotta rewind it back my over brain and don't over. Move that and then you get it. You gotta go back, son, and listen to it. It adds time. You know what I'm saying? It's Man, layers to this. I was sitting there like... <sighs> and then, I am, as a singer, um, and I don't know if you do this, but for me, when I'm listening to music... I'm listening to all of the instruments. I'm listening to whether or not it, the music is repeating itself on a loop or, is it, or if there is, um, like, with live instruments, typically, like, in jazz or um, certain types of genres. Certain genres, the music changes throughout the verse and the chorus regardless, right? There's all, there's all these different intricacies. And then, like, there's background, you know, vocals, and then there's ad lib. So I'm listening for all that. On his verse... Not only was it a loop of the same sound, but most of his rap was in the same cadence, and oh. I started to get bored. And I was like, oh, not, that's only, really funny. not only was I that's so not funny. able to comprehend everything he was saying all at the same time, but then it was all... How did you confuse and bore me at once? Right, wow, right. that's interesting. <laughs> I, I like, never... Ugh. That's so interesting. I'm dead ass serious. I'm totally in... That's so interesting. I, like, I can't, I can't, I can't. I got, Jay, Jay, I literally was, was sitting right here like, and I was like, yeah, I can't do this. He was like, why? I was like, I'm about to start drooling. <laughs> oh my gosh. We just lost all of our fan base. But here's the thing. It's not that I didn't like it. It's, it's not, no, that's fantastic. It's not that I didn't like it. It's not that I didn't, Ooh. you know, it's just that literally I am, 
for me, my musical brain and my logical brain doesn't work in a way where traditional rap, like hip hop, old school hip hop, or even just Jay Z and his the guys who are similar to him. I just I've never been that type of hip hop head. Where I can sit but J. There. Cole has a lot of like he's got like I don't I'm, I'm, I'm this is actually really interesting to me that your your perspective on this I'm not no because if you listen to J. Cole he sings he had like some of his stuff and, and he's very he's not metaphorical he's direct he's very direct like yeah. he, he does have metaphors but for the most part he's gonna tell you exactly he's, what this he's is thinking. the statement and this is right well, I get it and as a literal thinker yeah that works for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if I have to open up different note bubbles, that's so interesting. <laughs> in head, you lost me. That's so interesting. So yeah, I'm I'm sorry. Um, I couldn't even get to the Lil Wayne part, even though I heard I heard like a snippet of it, and I I had started to have a headache. So I was like, you know what, I'm I'm done. So I apologize in advance for all the hip hop heads who may be offended by this conversation. Just know it's not that I didn't like it or that I thought it was trash or anything like that. It's just my mind doesn't work in that capacity and it is what it is. Go ahead. So if anyone's ready to be further angered by our opinions mm. and not watch the show. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That's not an opinion. It was my experience. There's a difference. I have an opinion. Okay, this is his opinion. Yeah. So, so if you don't like her experience, in my opinion, we apologize. We're sorry. <laughs> Let me start by saying, Jay Z. If you, did, if if anyone came to me and said that Jay Z is the goat, I could accept it. Like I understand what you're saying, and I understand why you feel that way. Like I, you can make that argument, and I get it. Um, I love Jay Z generally. Like I listen to a lot of his stuff. He's not my favorite. But I've appreciated him and listened to him over and over again. Like American Gangster, I bang that hard. Uh, you know, the, the blueprint. I, I, I understand his history and his significance and his talent. His, just all of his business, you know, en entities to the side. As a lyricist, like he is absolutely gifted. He has unique talent. The fact that he's able to do what he does and At say... 52. Well, not just that, but the fact that he can say these things... The fact that he can come up with these multi-layered metaphors and super witty ways of saying things without having to write them down is extremely impressive. No one else does it. Like maybe a couple of other people can perform that way or write that way. It's, it's, it's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. All of that having been said, the verse was good, okay? He's always going to say good. He's always, he's always going to be good. He's always going to... Uh, he, he's never going to say some basic just like that was trash. He's never going to put out trash. However, no. and we'll move on as soon as I'm done saying this, because I don't want to have a whole discussion about it on this show. The man is 52 years old. I understand where he comes from. I'm tired of hearing him rap about selling drugs. How long ago did he sell drugs? I'm not going to get into it, but the man is 50 years old, bro. Like, Two, 52. So, I, like, that's your history, and I, I get it, but personally, yeah. personally, for a lot of different reasons, for a lot of different reasons, I am tired of hearing Jay-Z rap about his success with drugs. That's it. And I know he said more than that, but it turns me off immediately. And that's me. Love you guys. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, Jay watched the VMAs while he was in a hotel room and he was eating McDonald's and a sweet tea and he oh, had his hair in a bonnet. <laughs> I mean, that was the general <laughs> vibe. That, those things were like, so I did watch the VMAs. I did in not a have bonnet. A, I did not have a bonnet. And I With did, McDonald's. And I did not have McDonald's. <laughs> but I did have some basic food. Like, I definitely was at Texas Roadhouse earlier. Definitely had me one of the little margaritas. And, like, you know, like my hair was pulled up for sure. Like, <laughs> like it was, I did one of these, you know what I'm saying? Was your feet up. crossed? Listen. Was your feet crossed? Listen. I was stretched out like this. And I'm just, I'm going to I'm 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 <laughs> make sure that I can connect and relate to the young peoples and what they're doing. You know what I'm Wiggling saying? Wiggling your toes. I have my feet out under the covers like I'm chilling. <laughs> um, yeah, I, okay. I, I, I saw... It was the VMAs. It was the VMAs, I mean, you know? I, I, 
I actually I, didn't see a lot posted about it. Because uh, there's not much to post about unless you just want to complain. I'm That's not here to complain. Nicki Minaj did a dance, but I mean, like everything on her body is com it's so wildly it's it's like it's so fake. She you know, doesn't look. She literally and I like. Okay. I mean, some people like that. Let me just say this, guys. I don't know why I'm. I don't want to be in this space right now because I'm gonna laugh about things and have fun. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just address this as quickly as I can. All right. When Little Kim came out with her first album, or the Hardcore, is that what it's called? <sighs> yes. Yo. I'm still, I'm Yo. still, I'm still recovering from that. Yo. She, we didn't have a discussion on that. <laughs> she looked amazing. All right. No. She looked amazing. Okay. The poster, any, every male remembers that poster. It was on my college wall. I remember so many things about that poster. Okay. Thank you. And if you look at Little Kim now, okay. she's a completely different person. And it's a shame. Because she was beautiful. And now there's nothing real. <laughs> and Nicki Minaj is really close to being in that space. Like, I'm looking at her and nothing looks real. And I am, I remember Nicki before all of it she did and I'm not against plastic surgery, but she's a, I mean, naturally, she's a naturally gorgeous woman. And nothing looks like what she actually looks like. And there's something psychological going on there that should be concerning. And I have enjoyed her music too. I love her voice on Monster with, 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 with the Kanye album, Deep Dark Beautiful Fantasy. If you don't find, I love that album. Uh, I respect a lot of what she's done. Um, but it threw me off. And that was, you know, uh, that was the highlight of the VMAs. <laughs> you know, I really, I yeah. remember as a kid, we would count down the days to the shows came on, the BT Awards, the yes, VMAs, the yes. MTV Awards, like, we was ready, okay? And when they came on, everybody was talking about it. We would call our friends, are you watching? Oh my God, they Like, and then yes. when social media really was a thing, we would talk about it, like, online. And, like, it was the thing. And now, it's it's also, it's, it's like a joke. And it sucks because <clears throat> not that any artist needs validation to know that they are the, the bomb artist, right? But... It, it was nice to be able to listen to an artist and then see them get an award for outstanding this or best that when they really deserved it. And nowadays, not only is it so... You can see the corporation behind it. Oh like my, you can just it's see oozing. It. Yeah. It's oozing. And it's sad because there are so many artists who actually like really deserve the recognition because you know, what these shows do is amplify you. I'll say this. Since we're on this topic, and this is... I guess maybe my personal frustration with how the music industry uh, works is, this is my point, me completely outside of it. There were some terrible performances on that show. I know. They have been really bad lately. And it wasn't like that bad. <laughs> I know someone next to me who would have performed better than some of the performances that we've seen. Oh, mm -mm, mm -mm. I know this young lady from my city called Maya Bellardo. Yes. Who would have done something beautiful on that stage. Yes. And I'm someone who doesn't have any real interest in being big time. I'm happy in my space. But Maya would probably like to have that stage. And maybe that's not her specific audience. But there's balance. And I've said this before. I am all for the, the ratchet. Like, I don't have any problem with ratchet. But there's a balance. And, you know, maybe not Maya, but somebody like Maya could very easily, you know, I mean, we could, the two of us could easily go through our Instagram, pick out artists like, oh, she'd been better, yep. she'd been better, yep. she'd been better, yep. she'd been better. Yep. And that's the reality of, 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 of uh, mainstream music that I don't enjoy, but I still pay attention to because I need to know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we do have award shows. We have an, an award show, the Homie Awards, where we, you know, you have the opportunity as a local artist to be um, 
uh, validated, but that's the only one. And I remember one time the Delaware Black Awards, which I thought was a fun, I don't know if you were there, um, but I think I got Best Performing Artist that year. And I thought that show was phenomenal. It was uh, Sweet Fran Sean and um, A Million the Poet. Or was it, yeah, A Million, who did the hosting. I think they put it together. But either way, it was a, it was an awesome award show. And I feel like we should be able to have more things like that locally because obviously nationally we don't get that type of stuff, right? We only get the trash these days. But I don't know. It's just I mean, I've gotten something like, I don't know. I don't, I, I, nobody's going to be like me. I don't care. I really don't. But some people do and they should. And there should yeah. be a space for them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Jackson, Mississippi is having a crisis right now. We have funny stuff coming up, right? Like something funny to laugh about and be goofy about somewhere? Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Last Jackson, year. Mississippi. So, crazy enough, the church that I sing at, um, his mother's in Jackson, Mississippi. Or, oh, I know he's in, she's in Mississippi. I hope everything's okay. But they're going through a crisis right now. There was an issue with their water treatment plant. And for the foreseeable future, the water's not safe to drink. I think it's incredibly interesting, incredibly interesting that when things like this happen in a city, it's usually in a predominantly black city. Huh. Moving on. Uh, no, yes. We want to make sure that we offer our prayers. Of course. For Jackson, Mississippi specifically because... In the richest nation the world has ever seen, I'm so tired. Just... It's deplorable Fuck. that an entire, ma the biggest city in one of our states, can't get access to clean water. I'm not going to go down the blame train right now, but I hope they fix the problem for the sake of the good people of that city. Um, <laughs> this is America. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, Jay. Jay can read. Jay can read. Look at me. He can read, <laughs> and he has been reading. <laughs> can y'all see this without it being blinded? Do the YouTube hand. Put it behind it. What? I don't know what you're talking about. Nope. Okay. I don't know. It's gotta I come in focus. I see it on YouTube. I want to come in focus. <laughs> We're terrible. This is so ghetto. This is bad. We are so ghetto. This is, it's too bright. I don't know why I can't fix it, but listen. <laughs> Wait, I just, okay. Can you see it from back here? This is terrible. The this, book is called Dilla Time. The book is called Dilla Time. Um, and I should shout out my other Morehouse brother. Dilla Time, the life and afterlife of Jay Dilla, the hip hop producer who reinvented rhythm by Dan Charnas. And my Morehouse brother, who lives in Chicago, uh, Martin Walker, uh, mailed me a book. He said, brother, you've got to listen, you've got to read this book. Um, because, you know, he didn't realize how significant Dilla was. And I didn't either. I'm, I, listen, I've grown up on hip-hop, I love hip-hop, but I'm not a hip-hop head. Like, I don't dig in and learn all the things. And this was a big gap in my music education. Um, so I want to thank number one Martin for sending me this book. I finally finished it. Um, and I learned a ton about this man, his significance in modern day pop music. And I have a lot to say about this. I don't even know if we have the time. I mean, honestly, we could have a whole almost, you could have a whole discussion, uh, like a forum on, on the content of this book and on Jay Dilla and his you contributions. Know who would be a great conversation, who, who would have a great conversation? Huh. Chaos. Yes, I knew you want to say that. Yeah. And I, I agree. Um, uh, you know, I'll say this, um, however you slice it, he, his, 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 his contributions to hip hop music and to music in general um, have essentially gone to the highest levels and it influences a large degree of the music that all of us enjoy, who at least people who bother watch this. So, I mean, his connection to Kendrick Lamar um, was very clearly spelled out in this book and I love Kendrick Lamar. Um, I don't want to go into the dorky details of how he literally changed how musicians perceive time and how they perform in time. Um, but if you are a musician, 
it's really, I think, important that you educate yourself on Jay Dilla if you haven't already done so. Um, I've, I'm going to be doing some more due diligence. And the funny thing about this, and I'm not, like, I have a tremendous respect for this. The funny thing is, and here's, this is going to be another place where y'all hate me. Oh, no. <laughs> so um, I'm going to be dead ass honest. Like, I never really got into Neo Soul. Ah. Right, right, right. <laughs> like, like, I totally, I would love to see Erica Badu in concert. I love you Jill haven't? Scott. No, I would love to, you know, see Jill Scott live and all those things. Like, I get it. I, D'Angelo, I have a tremendous amount of respect for, but I never, like, connected with that the same way that, even though I'm so far away from that generation, but I never connected to them the same way that I connected to James Brown, Otis Redding, Donny Hathaway, da 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 da, -da. And the funny thing about that is his aesthetic <laughs> directly influenced all of those things. And it's really funny to me because my, uh, I guess, just personality is very clearly fiery. Like, I like a hard, just a James Brown, thump, fire in the music. That's why, you know, you know, you see me move my feet and boogie and like that is kind of my spirit. And not to say that some of these things don't bang, but like, it's funny to me that he's responsible for a lot of things that I don't connect to, but I totally respect. And I do love Kendrick, and I do love, you know, some of the other artists that, you know, with some of the artists that he is responsible for their sound in a lot of ways. Um, but either way, it's important as a musician for me to understand, because even if I don't bang, you know, all of his beats, um, he has done some things in terms of manipulating time and in terms of manipulating, uh, you know, musical equipment that any musician who is modern should probably know something about. Like, in as much as you might not hear uh, his aesthetic in my music, um, you might hear bits and pieces of it in the future in terms of the timing of how I produce certain songs. And I'll leave it at that. This guy's a very significant man in musical history, um, which is why... You know, he's in this, the, the, the African American History Museum, him and his MPC 3000. Uh -huh. um, so he's, it's really, I'm, 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 I couldn't be more uh, appreciative of this book being sent to me because it has educated me in a way that I needed. Yeah. There you go. Read it. And respect to Jay Dilla and Detroit. All right. Yeah. Um, now it's time for everyone's favorite segment. Yes. Florida Man. I have to say I'm a little disappointed in you, Florida, because y'all... Did they under-deliver this week? They under-delivered. Oh, man. So, I have two options. We could go with... No, you pick. <sighs> Knowing Jay, he always wants inappropriate. So, we're going to go with inappropriate. <laughs> <clears throat> Florida man arrested for calling a sex worker on his honeymoon. Oh. Oh, man. Yeah. Paul, 34 left his newly sleeping bride in their hotel room in Tampa. Oh, he's got an addiction. And went out to meet a prostitute. Wow. After they connected online. It was a cop. That's pretty good. What are you talking about? It was That's a cop. That's not disappointing. That's not it, disappointing. He was placed in handcuffs as soon as he arrived at the hotel. And, uh, yeah, they, they took him away. And the only question there was, was from a wedding guest who said, is it too late to get the gifts back? So he, w yeah, he was arrested. So he was discovered. So I, okay, so let's break this down. I mean, are we assuming that he did make love to his wife that night? We don't know. I have no idea. Right. Because there's I, I, levels to know, every amount of. There's levels. Right. Um, number one, when did you meet this prostitute online? This cop? Copstitute. Oh, that was good. Yeah. When did you meet her? Did, was it before the I do's? Were you planning this? Or did your wife under deliver? Or were you just like, hey, it's a celebration? Like, I, I would like to know when your thought process hit. He's a sex addict. Sex addiction is real. It's a real thing, and there's clearly. But my thing is, how, does the wife know? Uh, maybe not. That could go either direction. How could you not know? You could not know. You could not know. No. You're, you're saying that you're not explaining. I don't understand. I, I, okay, as, number one, it's not me. As a married I'm, woman, <laughs> I don't understand how I could not know my husband is 
a sex addict. It's possible. But then, you on, and then right after the wedding night, where is your respect for your woman? He doesn't have any. But I think also if you're a real addict, you don't, you don't think in that space of respect. You're just like, I need what I need, you know? But that's pretty wild. And then you, it's a cop. He probably was like, oh, we're, we're role playing. You want to hear? Well, Lady no, cop? I can't. But yeah. Wee, 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 wee. She gave him blue balls. <gasps> you know what? You blue balls. I that enough. <laughs> <laughs> Done. I have nothing else to say. That was the one liner I needed to make, and I'm done. Whatever you need to say. I want to know I'm what the for. phone call was when he called his wife from a slumber, in in her slumber, to say, "Hey, wifey, love of my life." Maybe he didn't call. Maybe he called somebody else. Like I can't call my wife and ask her to bail me out. I don't know what happened. You know. I would like to know. The article was very short, but I would have liked to hear that call. Like, hey, boo. <laughs> My partner in life forever, until death do us part. We like, got a problem, honey. We got a real problem. I got myself in somewhat of a dilemma. <laughs> you know when you were sleeping after? <laughs> Never mind. Stop. All right, Stop. 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 <laughs> oh, God. Uh, we want to say thank you to everyone who <laughs> donated their subscription to our cause. <laughs> We now have enough subscribers to go live on YouTube. Well, you, you them, tell, them, tell them what's coming up down the pipe because of it. We decided, right? Well, we already talked about poof. What's coming up down the pipe? Poof. Yes, we poof. did. Poof. Oh, we said that already. Yeah, okay. What's coming down the pipe? That, that's it. Live yeah. shows on YouTube. <laughs> but we're going to have a special, um, exclusive YouTube viewing of our first live YouTube video, specifically with poof in tow. The magic rabbit. Um, you know for all of the people who were kind enough to to subscribe to our YouTube page. We yes. now have a nice little foundation on which to build yes. and you all will be rewarded exclusively on YouTube yes. with poof. So be on the lookout for that date. Yes. And we'll post it into a, a a a YouTube poof live special. Yeah. Oh god. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching. We hope you have a wonderful week. We love you. Bye.